Hello, welcome back to this short drawing course looking at colour. Today we're going to look at colour as tone. This approach to colour involves using the spectrum of colours to make light and dark areas in a picture rather than using um, just using white and black. And the Impressionists are credited with being the people who introduced this idea. So this is a picture by Monet Haystack's End of Summer from 1891. You can clearly see in the shadows um, blues and purples uh, and similarly these shadows down here there's purples, browns, oranges and reds and quite a spectrum of colour being used to suggest the light and dark areas of the picture. It may be worth printing or creating a colour wheel to help you think about this idea. So, for example, if we have a, um, a yellow object and we want to darken it off, we move towards the greens and the blues. If we wanted to lighten it, we would add white. If we have a red object, we lighten by going to oranges and yellows before going to white. We darken by moving towards the purples and blues. A green object, darken with blues, lighten with yellows. A blue object, lighten through greens and yellows, darken through purples and then to black. Purple, we would lighten with a blue, we would darken, if possible with a red, darker purple, but probably the purple going into the black. Here we've got the two images that I put on the screen at the end of the last session. Um, the pepper exercise is one I've done a lot of times uh, in classes. So many of you may have done this one before. So I won't repeat that one today, but if you haven't done it, you might want to try it. So the pepper is red. We see oranges, yellows, and white in the light areas. We see purples going into black in the dark areas. On the stem, we see yellow lightening and blues into blacks darkening. That is one particular way, which is starting with the natural color and then moving around it. You can also decide to use colors which aren't the actual colors that you observe, but still function in the same way. So here we've got a spectrum of colors from light to dark being used to suggest the curves and the shadows in these cogs. A lovely drawing uh, by somebody else on Art Foundation with many years ago. Um, it's worth noting that how oily it, they've actually managed to make it with these colours, which don't necessarily match what you'd expect to see, but they create a lovely effect. So you can choose to use colours which aren't the natural colours of the object. So here's my subject for today, uh, licorice all sorts. Uh, and the reason I'm using these is because of their strong colours and quite, uh, quite simple shapes. So uh, we've got cube shapes, we've got cylinders. Um, and we will have a look later on at, uh, at how to draw uh, those sorts of shapes. But first, I'm going to uh, begin to explore the subject. And I'll just remind you that I recommend putting a strong light from one side onto your subject so you've got very clear light and dark. So I'm going to start with um, some colored pencils and I'm going to do some thumbnail sketches trying to work out what would be an interesting composition um, to draw. Um, I will, this will take me a little while and I may rearrange the um, licorice all sorts as I go. They're just out, out of screen at the moment. So let's get started on this.
This is my first thumbnail sketch. You'll notice it's quite rough and ready. I quite like the way you've got these different angles uh, going different directions, but not enough colour. Um, I can see one of those blue bobbly ones at the back, and I'm going to bring that into the front because I think that would be uh, more interesting. So I'm going to actually place it in there and quickly sketch it in, sort of going about there. Quite liking that combination as my first preliminary drawing. Probably don't want to, to put all that in, so I'm just wondering if I could crop it. Get that one in there. Maybe just drawing that section would be quite nice. Mind you, I've lost the brown. Do I want a bit of brown in there? Hmm. Maybe I could extend it a little bit more, more that shape. Hmm. That's my first idea. I'm now going to do a second preliminary drawing, just perhaps looking at it from a slightly different angle and see if I prefer that. I think I definitely do prefer that slightly more vertical uh, feel to, to this one. I think maybe just trimming it in a little bit. Something like that, bringing that black in there. And I might just make a slight movement of that, bring that in there to at least part of it. So that, so that circle's shown, you've got a nice echo circles. Okay, how many preliminary drawings you do is up to you. Um, it really is a matter of just trying to work things out. Um, but I think I'm fairly happy with this composition now. Um, before I actually start drawing it though, what I'm going to just look at briefly with you is, um, is how to draw these type of shapes, um, cuboid shapes and cylinders. These aren't perfect uh, cylinders, but what we can see from when we look at it from the top is that this is a uh, looks like a circle but as I tilt it that cylinder uh, narrows in the in that direction becoming what's called an ellipse and it narrows and narrows and narrows until it just becomes a straight line let's look at how to draw that so the first thing about um, a circle or an ellipse is that it does have symmetry along a central line. So if I draw a circle, first of all, I'm going to draw it's an axis at right angles to that center line. And with a circle, these distances are the same. Let's just bring that in. And it's the same here and here. Just double check that I've got those the same because I'm looking at it at an angle. That's about right. So the curve from the top starts off almost flat, curving, turning, so it meets this point again almost flat that's not too bad the first go i want to do try and copy that curve here 
I turn my page and copy it. Do the same. Do the same. Yeah, not too bad. And again, notice that I turn the page. That's so important. I have a natural curve in my hand which I can exploit. If I try to do curve upside down, it's a lot more difficult because it goes against the natural curve of my hand. So flat at this point, flat at this point curving in between. I've just got that just a little bit out. And the last one. Not too bad freehand, maybe just a little bit um, out on that one. So I might just bring it out just a tiny bit more there okay so if i were to draw an ellipse this is this uh tilting as i tilt it in one direction it will stay the same width but it becomes smaller in this direction Same space either side. And now I need to draw my curves in that space. That's not quite straight, is it? Straighten up a little bit. Now, people have a tendency when they do this to end up with something a bit pointy in the corners. To help you avoid that, just put a little circle there and there. And then I'm ready to go. So this is virtually vertical there curving and flattening turn it around natural curve in my hand flat so horizontal here vertical there keep turning it and the last one Okay, not too bad. And then the sides of my um, licorice all sort come down. Make that more vertical. Come on. There. Again, a center line. The further down, out below my eye line, the bigger that space circles and I turn it upside down to draw the curve. There, that's my basic um, liquid saucer with a circle in the middle. So following the same principles Turn it around. Now, it doesn't matter if you're not 100% perfect with these um, ellipses because the uh, liquid all sorts aren't 100% um, cylindrical. So you've got a bit of leeway there. So, so far so good. Um, let's imagine, because I've done it in, in blue, <laughs> you don't get licorice all sorts in blue, you do get the, 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 um, the ones with the little lumps on in blue. Um, I'm going to start to add shadow on this. Imagine that the light is going from this direction, so it's going to tend to be darker this side, getting lighter. And dark enough just a little bit towards that edge. 
that's how the light is going to change let's add a little bit of extra color in there so i'm going to use purple to really darken off that bit Blend that into the blue a bit more. And just a little bit of like a green where it's getting lighter. You can't, you can't see that, can you? I'll pull it in a little bit harder. Blend the blue back in. The line incidentally should follow the same colours, so along the top. So here, purple, going into blue, chain into green, back into blue again. And on the opposite side, the line will echo that too. Purple, blue, green and back to blue so you get this succession of color in both the tone rolling around and the line incidentally underneath because if this is sitting flat you would get a solid dark color like that I haven't done the top let's just assume that the light is just sort of glancing across it like that it's a general sort of blue and we've got the black in the middle i should explain that i used blue so you can see it nice and clearly but we don't actually get blue um licorice all sorts but never mind maybe we should so that's my basic um, cylinder. The other shape we get is a cuboid shape um, and or box shape and I'll just show you a couple of things about drawing that. The most important thing is we get a very slight bit of perspective so it will look bigger at the front than it does at the back. From the front then the back is going to look slightly smaller. So it might be a little bit smaller, both sides sliding, slanting backwards like that. And you can imagine here's my band running through the middle. Alternatively, it might be at a slight angle. So I see the front here and sloping backwards getting very slightly smaller if it goes backwards but notice how those are, are all parallel and this line might just come in very slightly and that one too because the back edges are slightly narrower Go for the color, proper color of a uh, licorice all sorts. So this one is pink. Lock that color in, and on this side, if we imagine it's in shadow, it's going to move towards the purple. It's going to be purplier. And maybe on this side it's going to be just a little bit yellower because it's in the light haven't dealt with the black at all Ooh, just solidify the top first a little bit haven't dealt with the black at all well let's actually just do something with that because there's no need for it to be such a solid black so i'm going to make this a bit bluer here and a bit purpler over here just a 
solidify the top a little bit and maybe put a little bit more of that pink back in there so it isn't quite so orangey there maybe a bit more purple down the side just a bit more okay let's get on to the main study um, I'm going I've been demonstrating so far um, with colored pencils that might be what you decide to work with um, but for my next study my, my final study I'm going to work with um, with chalk pastels on white paper I've roughly sketched out um, my composition based on the studies I did earlier this one here and uh, you will notice that I've drawn it um, with coloured lines. I've not used black lines and I've not used a graphite pencil because I don't want that dirt to be introduced. I want to keep it lovely and bright and clean. And now what I'm going to do, because I'm working on white paper with pastel, I'm going to put an initial wash in the background. So uh, I'm using some very cheap watercolour um, paints. You could use diluted acrylic paints, you could use watercolours, poster paints, um, you could use anything like that if you want to put a bit of colour onto your white paper. And it just helps the pastels um, so you've not got white shining straight through them. The one thing I wouldn't recommend you use is inks because they tend to be a little bit shiny and slippery when they're dry. So, here goes. Notice that I've added blue for shadows around the outside and some of the colours aren't exactly how I'd like them but for a base that's absolutely fine. You're getting it about right so that when you put the pastel on it has uh, a colour underneath rather than white paper. Just got to dry that off now and I'll just point out that I've taped my paper to a piece of, uh, of board I've kept it white so it doesn't uh, stand out too much but I've done that so that it can't wrinkle up because it's wet. These are the pastels that I'm going to be using. A set of, uh, of wreaths. It's worth getting a larger set so you've got a nice range of different colours. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is to start to block in. Now you could choose to block in everything and then uh, and then work on the individual pieces uh, but just to talk you through um, this method i'm going to start with one bit initially okay so i'll start with this yellow um, sweet it's quite a pale yellow and i'm going to block the color in nice and solidly Scrubbing it quite hard so that it's nice and um, solid. And now shadow. It's definitely more in shadow down here. So I'm going to add in orange. And it's in light towards the top. So I'm going to add in some white there and I'm going to use the original pastel to blend between the two. So it's blending that to get a gradation of tone. 
from light to dark. Blend that a little bit more. Light to dark. On the front, um, it is a little bit in shadow because my light is coming from here. So a little bit in shadow. So again, I'm going to take the orange. Working that on there to create a little bit of shadow. You'll notice that's a little bit too harsh, but then I blend it in. So that shadow sits. At the moment, the edges aren't terribly distinct. That doesn't matter. The middle, instead of just using black, I'm going to start with a darker blue and move into purple now that's a choice i could use a bit of black nothing wrong with black but it's just nice to keep that lovely and fresh So there is layer one of my study. I've blocked in the basic colours and tones. As you can see, it needs quite a bit of sharpening up and, and more detailed building. But at this stage, in order to do that with pastels, I need to fix it. So remember, I'm using hairspray, 45 degrees angle, light spray, all over. Just need to let that dry. Okay, so um, a few final touches to this drawing, this impression. Um, I have sharpened up around these top edges with a little bit of white and I can come back in if I want to, to just redefine some of these edges with colored pencils. But I'm gonna use a very similar principle um, when doing this. So, for example, on this, as I sharpen it, with the yellow coming round, I switch to an orange line further down. So there's my final drawing. Um, I'm now going to show you a slideshow of students' work um, exploring using colour as tone.
I hope you enjoyed today's session and if you do Facebook please post examples of, of your work on the Art for All Facebook page details coming up next. In the final session we'll be looking at combining drawing with colour.